welcome Ravi to uh, the podcast. Hey. Uh, how did they get there? Uh, do you mind quickly introducing yourself to our listeners? Yeah, sure. My name is Ravi Gidamal, and uh, I'm a director at a business called Edge Digital Manufacturing, uh, working with manufacturing companies in all things digital. Cool. Uh, do you want to tell us a little about uh, Edge Digital and what your role has been in Edge Digital? Yeah, so, so um, I set up Edge Digital with a colleague about two years ago. Um, previous to that, I'd been a management consultant and an investment banker. And uh, basically, from a few years helping SMEs with digital transformation and growth and strategy, uh, we really decided that there was a gap in the market to provide more structured support. And, and that was what we set the business up to do. Nice. Uh, one question that I ask all my uh, interviews is, do you love what you do? Yeah, I, I enjoy the variety. I enjoy the autonomy. Uh, I love the creativity. Every day is a different day. And, uh, you know, ever since setting up my own business, that's been one of the things I've really enjoyed. Nice. Uh, and what led you to uh, start your own venture? I mean, you've had experience across, you know, as I said, uh, in investment banking, as a, consul as a management consultant, uh, so the very different uh, types of job roles. And now you create your own venture and into the manufacturing domain uh, as well. Well, I mean, I've always been quite entrepreneurial and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in my blood. Uh, I'm a Cindy and yep. uh, people who know Cindy's know that they like running their own businesses, don't like uh, working for other people. Yeah. So I think I wasn't very good at following orders. So uh, I ended up needing to employ myself. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work. But uh, but also, you know, I like the, the breadth of what I do. Uh, and I think in bigger organizations, you tend to have quite traditional roles and it's quite hard to, to sort of mix and match different things. So, uh, so I think setting up my own business was something that would allow me to uh, play in different fields. And, and you know, to your question about manufacturing, that was yeah. uh, the other reason, you know, my background wasn't really with manufacturing companies. It was in finance and growth and in lots of different sectors, but actually the skill sets and the things we're doing could apply anywhere. Uh, so, you know, we picked manufacturing because there's a specific opportunity right now uh, yeah. as they're looking to deploy new technologies. Great. And, you know, you've been through different job roles, uh, including your uh, own initiatives. Um, is there, what do you have to do, you know, to actually keep learning and be able to adapt for the different requirements through, through your entire career up to now? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this. I think you know, we're always having to be agile and think about new ways to uh, to work. And I think uh, really at the heart of that is people. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I find is you know, people are not like machines. They're not very predictable. Uh, you know, every day there's a new challenge, whether it's emotional health, uh, chemistry, working with different types of people, yeah. uh, external facts. So, you know, for me, uh, you know, it's always been about reacting to the current situation you find yourself in and making the right decisions to, to get along, whether it's with clients, friends, colleagues. Um, you know, as an example, uh, uh, one of the first jobs I had, uh, I didn't realize, but I was actually competing for my role mm -hmm. with someone on a different team. Now, this was unknown to me, but it was a, a scarce role and with limited resources, and I was taking a seat, effectively. Uh, and it was my performance versus other people. Yeah. Uh, so actually being successful wasn't just about the job I was doing, but the relationships I was making with other members of the team and building trust and rapport. Uh, and I think, you know, running my own business, it's similar. You know, we get to call the shots and we're making the decisions, but actually it's a fine balancing act between clients, stakeholders, uh, work-life balance at home, mm -hmm. uh, especially, you know, during current times. Uh, so yeah, it's about figuring out, you know, what you're saying yes to, what you're saying no to, and uh, every day, you know, I'm still learning. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> and uh, how important do you think uh, willingness to learn is important uh, in any industry uh, for an individual to grow? I mean, I think it's essential, but more importantly for me, uh, if I wasn't learning new things, I'd be getting bored and wouldn't be enjoying my role. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I particularly like what we're doing in digital technology because the field is continually evolving. And mm -hmm. if I thought I knew everything, which I don't, uh, <laughs> next week there'll be 10 new technologies and 
uh, and there's continually new entrants and new ideas yeah. and you know we're doing a lot of work in the innovation space right now and that's really mm. exciting because, uh, yeah you're continually coming up against new things that you know maybe a year ago didn't exist yeah um, there's always people out there who know more about specific things than you do so you can always ask questions and yeah. discover new things right and did you, when you started off you know when you left school and college did you expect that this is where you will reach uh, in your career where you are today uh not at all not at all i think i mean in fairness i probably was a little bit clueless uh and was just going for you know what i thought would pay a good salary and give mm -hmm. me good learning opportunities uh but i think what i tended to do is in every role and in every situation you know follow a path and uh, take advantage of the the opportunities that are there um say yes to to getting involved in new projects uh do my best and build relationships and then see, see what comes from it mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny you know if i reflect back on all the different roles there probably is a golden thread and you know there are certain skills and certain um things let's say mm -hmm. you know from you know particular uh, particular techniques or particular uh, learnings that you tend to apply across different roles and yeah. you're always taking that to the next one yeah um, but I couldn't have predicted this particular path I think yeah you know yeah, and that's what we all feel right that it's very easy for anybody to see a person at a particular role and think that you know they had it figured out but it rarely uh, ever is that case, right um, and you know you talked about uh, also that uh, you know when you started uh, looking to get into the career you're looking at you know which is the company what role um, and what salary would they play uh, how important do you now think is uh, the culture of an organization that you will uh, that you would look to work for uh, or when people are looking for jobs and stuff how important uh, is that aspect i mean it's a nice to have and mm -hmm. certainly i think the roles that i've found uh, i've lasted longer or I've looked back on with fondness is where there was really strong cultural alignment, if you like, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my values really matched the values of the, the colleagues I worked with. Uh, but it's very hard to know that from the outside. And it's incredibly hard to know that when you've got very little experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, could I have guessed certain characteristics of organizations? I suppose at a high level, yes. Yeah. You know, my first organization was an American organization. Uh, that that had particular culture. Uh, I moved to a bank that was European run that had a slightly different culture. Mm -hmm. You know, so there may be very stereotypical high level things you can look for, but actually people are people. So it's all down to the team. And, I, and I'd add in many organizations, I've seen different cultures within different departments. Mm -hmm. So you might think that at, at a high level, the organization is saying all the right things. But that only works if the team you get placed in or you or you work with yeah. shares those values. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. No, uh, moving on to you know our next section. Um, uh, is there any particular book that you have given most as a gift, uh, or any one to three books that have most influenced you? That's a really good question. <laughs> I think you know books that have influenced me. I mean, recent ones. Uh, I'll mention a couple. Uh, Factfulness by mm -hmm. Hans Rosling and Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Taleb. Uh, and both of those, I was thinking they challenged the way that I've thought about uh, economics and numbers. And, you know, I, I did economics and statistics at university. And, uh, you know, often everything isn't what it might seem at first glance. So, so both those books were quite helpful to challenge assumptions and, you know, make me think a bit more about what's going on. Right. And, you know, failure is a, is a part of growth, at least uh, I see mm -hmm. that. But uh, do you have any specific uh, failure of yours or an apparent failure that either set you up for a later success uh, or, uh, you know, uh, was is considered your favorite failure? Uh, I mean, one that comes to mind straight away is uh, university. I, uh, I didn't get into my first choice university and at mm -hmm. the time it was very disappointing and it, it felt like i'd failed especially when friends were getting into there yeah. and 
uh, but actually it meant I studied a different subject. Yeah. Uh, I made friends who were lifelong friends. Yeah. Uh, and I think I probably got into other work opportunities that I wouldn't have had I've got into the first choice. Yeah. So you, you might know, have to know where the first one... choice was. Uh, I was Oxford. Um, okay. So I, I'd been to a, a school where it was almost like everyone was, you know, striving to get into Ox Oxford or Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, so when I didn't get in, it was, you know, it felt like I hadn't met that goal. Yeah. But, uh, but actually, there's more to life, and uh, I, I yeah. don't regret it one bit. Right. Uh, do you have any unusual habit or an absurd thing that you love? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. I actually one thing comes to mind. I um, when I was uh, in a job where I was traveling a lot, I used to collect matchboxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, you go to different restaurants and clubs, and uh, and I think you know, smoking was much more common back then. And yeah. uh, I used to just you know, I started off picking up a few, and then suddenly that became something I needed to do every restaurant or, or place. And uh, it's funny, I was clearing out the shed the other day and I found this whole big bag of uh, <laughs> matchstick boxes. But, uh, do you still collect that then? Or you can't find uh, boxes anywhere now? I, I can't find them. I mean, I would, <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, now it tends to be they put toothpicks in or yeah. other things. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, little mementos of where I've traveled and, yeah. uh, places in the world I've been is uh, yeah, something <laughs> unusual that I like to do. <laughs> uh, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's anything available now that you can actually uh, get similar, right? Uh, in any of the restaurants and places. I mean, I, I generally stick to uh, magnetic uh, uh, sort of logos or stuff uh, that yeah. you can really get for any. So at least you know which places you have traveled uh, to. Yes. Uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, there's some learnings uh, that you still carry on uh, as well. So is there any specific thing from either school or college, uh, either principal or learnings that you still uh, continue to apply? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the ones that stuck with me the most is uh, I used to work for uh, a chap who had a background in the Navy, mm -hmm. or his family did. And he always used to talk about uh, offensive and defensive strategies strategies and uh and effectively what he was saying is you've got to get the basics right and have your defense strong before you can go and shoot for the stars and you know try to score the goals and, and be offensive and mm -hmm. and i think i've always tried to keep that in mind um, and share that advice with others uh because you know particularly i think in a corporate environment uh you often look for those opportunities to be the superstar and to, mm -hmm. to make your name but actually uh if you've got gaps in your defense then it's a recipe for uh, for people to to find the holes and hold you back. Um, and similarly, as a business, uh, we want to come up with new ideas and grow, but we also need to get the basics right. And yeah, so I think that balance uh, for me is really important. And uh, you know, you've been in industry uh, for quite some time. You've been through different industries as well, um, and now in your own venture. Uh, is there a specific a stereotype uh, or a bad advice that you hear uh, in either you know in finance uh, or uh, in the manufacturing or the consult being the consultant as well uh, that you've heard? Well, I think um, probably in manufacturing and also when I was working for an accounting firm, uh, there's a, a sense that the industry is full of grey-haired old white men and. Uh, in fact, uh, my old firm did some analysis, which uh, sort of pr proved that to an extent in terms of the, the average age and uh, type of UK director. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I think what I'm discovering is we're working with some amazing partners and clients from all sorts of backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, young, old, men, women, different nationalities. And what's really exciting is I think the world is moving on and yeah. it's much more accessible for people from everywhere to uh, to try new ideas and, and build businesses and yeah uh, the one idea the one thing I found quite exciting is uh, we've been working with some family-owned businesses where you have different generations involved working together mm -hmm. uh, men and women and, and that's you just get that diversity of thought and creativity which is uh, which is really great to see yeah I think yeah, a lot of people uh, underestimate manufacturing for that 
that you know it's it's a dirt, it's a dirty place to probably work in but at this moment as both of us know it's one of the coolest places to work in especially with all the new technologies uh, coming about yeah uh, and we yeah. we were at the i forget what it's called the top 100 uh, sort of upcoming manufacturing yeah. employee and yeah i mean great diversity there and some really exciting young people coming through mm-hmm. uh, who i think will really shape up the industry so absolutely it's going to, it's going to be exciting to <laughs> uh you know you get have busy days and even during the covid period now well you're you not traveling but you're doing a lot more zoom meetings uh, as a, uh organizing workshops do you uh get overwhelmed or unfocused any point in the day and if you do what do you do to bring back your focus yeah i think it it can be very easy to to lose your way and mm-hmm. I think it would be nice to say that I have a really good routine and every day you know I get my exercise and you know etc but actually life's not like that. Yeah. Uh so, so what I find is you know if life's getting better for me I will uh try to take some time out to be silent to be still to pray to reflect to step away from the chaos um mm-hmm. but also to structure my thoughts. Um I often find you can get a lot of noise that gets in the way so really trying to uh get rid of that noise and and focus on you know what's going to make a difference mm-hmm. in the era now uh because you know there's a lot of uncertainty and that's probably yeah. only boost uh and so, do you if you do you do anything specific like either write down your thoughts or use a whiteboard uh any anything to structure your thoughts better I, yeah i do a few things i mean i i keep a journal I, that's something i've done for the last 10 12 years mm mm-hmm. uh, although if i'm honest i've probably had less time since this whole covid crisis to uh, to do that than yeah. than in previous years so uh, it it does require a bit of discipline to to keep the time aside yeah uh, and then you know there are different um what would i call it st- structured processes where you know and uh, I, i go to church so we have uh, models that we can use which you know might involve you know spending a few minutes in silence Mm-hmm. uh just uh being still yeah uh, but you know lots of people will have their own uh, approach uh and i think it, there's a there's a sort of elementary truth if you like in that of uh just grounding ourselves and one of the things i found during covid that's been fantastic has been uh, because i'm working at home more being able to take uh take some exercise with the whole family and so we found we were doing you know an hours walk in the afternoon after work mm-hmm. uh, every day and just getting that fresh air enjoying nature it's, yeah. it's a wonderful nice and you know knowing what you know today uh if you had the opportunity to instruct your younger self uh what would that be yeah i think i would um I would tell myself to step out of my comfort zone more uh and say yes and and probably not to listen to self-imposed limits uh I mean often I would wait I think to for the opportunity to arise wait to be asked uh try to create a situation to for the opportunity when actually I think now I would say just get on with it speak up and make it happen mm-hmm. you know, don't wait for other people and probably the risk is far less than we convince ourselves it is yeah uh, yeah i think um, that's that is uh, i've seen that to be true as well i think uh, people who take initiative and i mean you'll never know everything and there's no right time for uh, you know to start something or to do something uh so it's better to get started and figure it out uh, as you go along and the worst comes yeah, to worst think- yeah you know i mean i used i used to take a lot of initiative but yeah. i think it's that next it's the activation of that initiative mm-hmm. so uh it, it's it's almost uh finding the pilot as opposed to just discussing the idea so really yeah. really you know i identifying those action steps that take take you from having an initiative and an idea about something yeah. to actually getting some um, yeah you know I, i'll give you a, a real example so about must have been during the financial crash uh, crash i was thinking about sme finance and yeah. how to get money to small businesses and i had some great ideas and and actually i ended up working for a number of and is in that space 
Uh, but what I didn't do was just get on with setting up a new bank or setting up a new uh, peer-to-peer lender. Yeah. Uh, because there are others who they didn't just have the idea and talk to people. They just went ahead and set, set up the organization. Uh, and I really, you know, respect that, that risk-taking uh, approach and, yeah. you know, I, I, Maybe does that also come by just you know trying things or getting into the habit of trying things and being open to it failing as well? Yeah, I, I think it's trying things, but I think it's also, I guess it's a confidence thing and a boldness. Yeah, uh, and I think some of the most successful entrepreneurs uh, just really almost push the limits of what you even think yeah. uh, credible. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, we only see the winners. So there are lots of them who, you know, and I meet lots of small business owners who are trying to get that breakthrough, but haven't. Yeah. Uh, so there's a danger that you, you can sort of misjudge history because you're looking only at the, the small percentage who've gone for it and been successful. Uh, but certainly my challenge to myself and to others would be just get on with it. And yeah. what have you got to lose? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, and given the current situation of COVID, uh, we know a lot of students who are graduating um, now, and then uh, there are people who are getting laid off work. So uh, uh, they will require to either pivot their careers uh, or, you know, reskill themselves. Uh, what would be your advice, firstly, to the graduates uh, entering the industry, either in finance or in manufacturing, uh, and the same thing for the professionals? Wow. Um, well, I think for graduates, so, you know, I, I was a graduate, I've managed teams of graduates and, you know, right now working with graduates as well. And I think asking questions and finding ways to show your enthusiasm and demonstrate how hungry you are uh, is vital. And if there's one thing I've sort of noticed over the last 20 years is there's been a bit of a shift in uh, work style and you know, there's lots of jokes about millennials and all that sort of stuff. But I think, you know, for me, it's that getting into that habit of going the extra mile and asking the questions and trying to find ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'll give you a good example. This is 10 years ago, but we were working late night on a project for an important client. Uh, and the graduate in the team suddenly announced that they had uh, theater tickets. So good luck, guys, finishing the project. I'm off to the theater. Yeah. Uh, now, great, that's good work-life balance and prioritizing yeah. personal interests, but it's culturally, it's something that would have been unheard of for me 10 or 15 years prior, yeah. because the culture wasn't there. And so I think we need the work-life balance and we need to respect everyone in the team, but there is also a sense of being in it together. And, yeah. and that means uh, the almost you know, the organization's needs in a situation are, as important as your own personal priorities yeah. and finding that right balance. Yeah. Uh, but for yeah. Experienced, yeah. experienced people, I think uh, probably the best thing to do is to work out what your core strengths are and what you can bring to an organization, to a situation. And um, so I know when I've been transitioning industries and growing businesses, I've done stuff like strength finders uh, and, and just trying to, you know, really understand what are the unique things that I bring to an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's getting out there, meeting people, networking, finding the opportunities to engage. Uh, and I think willingness. So whether that's doing pro bono work or getting involved in specific initiatives, you know, anything that can help you find an edge and uh, uncover the next opportunity is what it takes. And, you know, we're hearing about all the people who are being furloughed who might lose their jobs and you know it's going to be a very competitive marketplace mm -hmm. it means it's about finding ways to differentiate yourself and that's no different to us running our business we need to find ways to to be valuable to the clients we want to help absolutely uh, i think that's great advice i'm sure the listeners will uh, take on that uh, and i think it's been great just speaking to you ravi about your experiences and your uh, thoughts on these things um, so before we end, uh, one last question. We've discussed mm -hmm. about you know how you got uh, here. Uh, where do you want to get from here? Wow, good question. Um, I think so, I mean I've got kids who are nine and seven, 
Mm -hmm. So I sort of, I guess, look at life with two lenses. There's the sort of surviving the next 10 years. And, uh, you know, I'd love for our business and businesses to be viable and to keep doing exciting stuff and uh, to grow and add new people to the team and work with exciting businesses. So that's probably the short term view. Um, and then longer term, I think probably like many other people, I, I suppose I have a, a deeper desire to be less, if you like, dependent on day to day operations uh, and to be able to be that little bit more strategic, philanthropic, uh, picking and choosing really interesting projects and causes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that means getting enough stability and success in the, the, in the day job to, to build a bit more time to, to do some of the exciting stuff. I mean, I don't quite think it'll be, you know, sort of the Virgin Galactic or whatever <laughs> type thing. But, uh, you know, I, I have a few charities I help and, yeah. uh, and I've always had an interest in, um, in sort of poverty relief and international development. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd love to create a bit more time to pursue some of those interests without having to worry about uh, <laughs> all the day-to-day -day yeah. operational work, which is also, you know, exciting and important. Absolutely. No, I think that's been great. And it's been great uh, talking to you uh, as well. I'm sure the listeners going to absolutely enjoy this. Uh, anything else before we end? No, I think that it's been fascinating. I look forward to uh, watching a few of the other interviews too. Absolutely. Thanks, Ravi. Hey, listeners. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Would love to hear your feedback in the comments section. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe.